Hey guys, what's up? So it's like very dusky out here. Um, I just got s done sewing a row of my, hold on, I'll tell you which ones it is. The Van Gogh Fantasy Lemon Drop Mix. I got these from Sunflower Steve. They're not gonna be released to the public until next year, so. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm feeling pretty special right now. <laughs> As if all of this wasn't enough. <laughs> I will be completely honest. It does actually make me feel intensely special, but I love getting to share it with you guys that these seeds are in here. Um, I sewed this row of them. I sewed the whole package, so hopefully it goes okay. <laughs> I went all in here and um, I put my Van Gogh seeds. I put them about eight inches apart because my hope with all the seeds that I'm sowing this year is to sow them for the potential of cut flowers. So if you're gonna, if you sow one sunflower seed all on its lonesome, where it has plenty of space, it will get a lot bigger than if you sow it like six, six inches from other sunflower seeds. Um, it's kind of the same thing with like lettuces. If you took a package of greens that are marketed as baby greens and you put one seed every 12 inches, you would likely get a head lettuce. But when you sow them super close together, you get baby greens and they'll never produce more than that because they're too close to other plants. So with sunflowers, they have the potential to get really big a lot of times if you give them enough space. But in the case of this bed, I sewed them fairly close together because I'm hoping that my Van Gogh mix will be lovely cut flowers and we'll get to experience those together. And maybe some of you guys will get to snag some of those seeds next year. Now I do have this one lonely sunflower here. You can see this is actually a reseed from last year. I have no idea what that is. But you know how I feel about volunteers. If they have a will to grow, I have a will to let them. Here, I've got lots of things that I sewed um, earlier. It's all that on the vlog. They're not up yet. Does anybody else check their seedlings like the day you sow them, <laughs> sew them and every day they're on out? I do. And I've been working on my garden plan. I'm actually thinking down the middle here, I'm gonna do cow peas. We are planning on doing another very big plot of cow peas over there to multiply our seed stock maybe make them available to you guys in a later date. But here, this is going to be the first plot that we do um, in these two beds. And we're planning on moving our pergola up here. So I'm thinking maybe of doing a section here that has the pergola over it. I can essentially plan on things that would benefit from some shade. Because the pergola, I'm planning on putting shade cloth over that. So that would be something that would benefit things like tomatoes really like some shade my friend jesse was here today and we were looking at my puny seedlings my seedlings look really puny this year i think it's because i had shade cloth on my greenhouse jesse looked at me today he said i'm not trying to be whatever but the fact that you're struggling feels good to me because <laughs> he's kind of a newer gardener and uh seeing me struggle has encouraged him that you really don't arrive and guys, my seedlings are puny. I'm struggling. I've been considering though, being able to move those peppers out. I'm planning on this being my pepper space. In my experience, peppers have done very, very well in the high tunnel. And if I move them out here, I, one, they're gonna have the protection of the shade cloth, which is gonna be really nice. But two, you know, they've been a little stunted, but I think moving them out here, um, I could potentially roll these walls down, provide them a little more warmth, and get them going more, whereas they've been a little stunted. I don't know. One thing I do know for sure is that harvesting cabbages is on my list to do this week. We've been eating these little by little, but I actually need to harvest a lot. Some of these are really large. I need to make a good bit of sauerkraut. It'll last us for months. Look at this, this is wild. I've actually never had this happen before. This cabbage is growing multiple heads. What do you guys think? Have you ever seen this? I've never seen this before. It's, this is the only one that's doing it. The rest of them all have one big head, but this cabbage has three heads. What's the deal here? <laughs> so I've been pulling out this evening the brassicas. Some of these are still in here. I've got a few more down here actually I could probably pull. Some of these are in too deep. I need to get something to cut them off. My hesitation here is that some of these kales are actually still edible, like this dino kale. I haven't pulled it. I will go ahead and pull this one that's gone to seed. I waited for a while on these brassicas that had gone to seed. If I can pull them out, shake all the soil off of the roots, 
I've got a whole bunch in the back of the side by side to take the pigs. So I've been taking some of these extras and just throwing them to the cows. They don't really come running as you see. I don't know, maybe, look. Oh no, she changed her mind. Pigs and chickens come running. Cows are like completely above us. By the way, we have a new baby Devin. It's too dark for me to go out there and show you now because it's like very evening-ish right now. The sun is setting. Um, but we had another little heifer. So if you remember, we had a heifer calf in like November-ish. And then we had another heifer calf a couple of weeks ago. We had another heifer calf this week. Crazy. Um, that's pretty, it's pretty good. When you're trying to grow your herd to get heifer after heifer like that, we're not complaining. Tomorrow when it's brighter, I'll take you guys out there to see them. Um, we have one more that we're waiting on to calve. She should calve here pretty soon. So at this point, if she has a heifer, that's great. It'll grow the herd. If she has a bull calf, that's fine too because we'll make him a steer. So he will be um, in the freezer for the next year. We have a few steers out on the pasture as it is, but I have been pulling brassicas all day and throwing them over the fence. I put a bunch in the back of the side by side to take to the pigs. I gave some to the chickens and the cows and the horses and the alpacas have gotten the rest. They were really enthusiastic about it for the first few, but now they're kind of over it. So I'm trying to get the garden cleaned out because uh, the next thing on the agenda is to hang up the trellises. The only sprouted brassicas that are left in here after my evening of work are the ones that are too deeply rooted for me to pull out by hand. I need to either cut them out or I need to get somebody stronger than me to pull them out. Um, a lot of times we just cut things off at the root. The problem with brassicas is a lot of times they will just keep growing if you leave the roots in the ground. So I usually pull them out and shake all of the soil off that I can. And um, I did that with a lot of these that were in here, but these four are just kind of boogers. So I need somebody to help me. Another thing I did this afternoon was I set up one of my green stalks with my micro dwarf tomatoes. So this is gonna be coming soon. I'm gonna be telling you guys about this. I waited on the rest of the micro dwarfs. I have another green stalk to set up over on the other side. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm supposed to tell you yet, but there's like a secret sale coming for Roots and Refuge followers for green stalks. So just coming very soon. I didn't fill both of them because while these are a little hardened off, they actually have a little bit more. I, I'm not 100% confident that they're ready to be out here. So I'm gonna scooch this thing over into the shade tomorrow and I'm gonna try kind of hardening them off using the pavilion to shade them and bring them back out. But I didn't plant out both in case it fails miserably. My seedlings are just so stunted. I felt like maybe planting them out into the planters would be a benefit to help them grow. So the sun is setting, but look, the horses found the brassicas and Bear is watching them. I'm feeling really good though about the way this garden looks and the fact that I'm gonna get my trellises hung and I'm getting a lot of stuff planted out here just this week. That's why I've been clearing it out. Isn't this beautiful? All right, so it's like completely dark outside right now. My camera's probably gonna barely focus by the light of the greenhouse and of the moon. Um, I routinely garden past where it's light enough to actually make videos, but Maya just came out here looking for me and I'm actually gonna have him pull up these brassicas that I wasn't strong enough to pull out. It's those and the, those two and those two. What is this? It's kale. Is it really prickly? No, it's not prickly. Just pull it at the bottom and you need to pull it out and then shake as much of the soil off as you can. Um, I just couldn't get it out. It's really in there. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, and I've got these in the back of the side by side. Oh, it's up at the front. Yeah, I walked down here. Um, that I was gonna give to the pigs. I've already given several to the cows and some to the chickens, so I think the pigs can get the rest. Wow, you shook that off good. You hardly left any soil on the roots. Very nice. And there's a couple right there. I've got everything else out, I think, except for these that were too solid for me. So a lot of times cutting things off works 
but in the case of kale it'll just keep trying to grow back which may be what you want but I don't want that I want to put something different here thank you Hercules all right guys so I obviously ran out of light outside so to wrap this video up I was thinking about it all I was like how do I end this I want to point out something. I think that sometimes we have in our mind what gardening is going to look like. And we think it's going to mean like really early mornings or like sweating our tails off in the afternoon while we work outside in the garden. But you know, sometimes it means gardening in the rain. <laughs> and sometimes it's going to look like gardening through those dusky last 30 minutes of the day. For me, it's a matter of like working smarter instead of harder. And I would so much rather, especially in the summer when it's very hot, work when it's halfway dark outside rather than when it's 100 degrees. Tonight was a perfect example of that. I gardened until I literally just couldn't see anymore and it was great. I got a lot done and had I just counted on what I was actually able to fit into my schedule for today, I wouldn't have gotten a lot done. But because I utilized that time that you wouldn't necessarily think of as gardening time, I was able to get a lot done. It actually works out with the kids too, because a lot of times I let my kids kind of do their routine in the evening while I'm out there working. Um, and we have earlier in the day to do homework and do all the things, dinner and all that stuff. So just a reminder, also one other thing at the end of this video, you might've noticed today, I'm wearing our new shirt, Eat Real Food. Um, this comes in multiple colors. Pre-orders are open right now. I'm really excited. You're gonna see me living in these shirts. I don't think I've been so excited about a shirt design in a really long time. And uh, yeah, they're available for purchase as well as some of our old favorites. I'll put a link down below. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.